I'm Zach George. I'm a professional dog trainer. I don't use choke prong or electric collars, and we are on a mission to show you how we train our dogs everything. If we have learned anything about dog training, it is that dogs require a comprehensive approach. We've got to take into account their entire experience. I want to give you three powerful reasons how giving your dog something new can benefit both of you. Reason number one, it can go a long way to preventing destructive behavior. New and unique toys can help your dog establish problem solving skills. And number three, it can improve their focus and that drive. Super Chewer toys are for those dogs who are so tough on toys. The Super Chewer box is notably heavier. Yeah, I don't think a dog is going to destroy this. Bark Box toys are for dogs who are tough on toys, but maybe not quite as tough. I will forever be impressed by their attention to detail on all of these toys. They're gonna to get those high value top notch treats. These are awesome on walk. We put some peanut butter on this. When life gets busy, having something like this to go to is wonderful. All of you can get a free extra box when you sign up at BarkBox.com slash dog training or SuperChewer.com slash dog training. I'll have a link below. In today's episode, Veronica is about nine months old and she's about to have a very novel first time experience. We're gonna take Veronica on a walk in a brand new place. Our main objective today is exposure to a bustling city. So we've got our first major distraction of the day. Got a dog straight ahead there. We have dogs over here. That sometimes presents a challenge. Four foot leash, attached. clip to you. Yeah, attached. We're always extra vigilant in places like this. Like, here you go, here's two off-leash dogs, and they're doing okay. We we'll always want to be aware of them. These dogs seem very well behaved and under control, but you don't want to assume too much. Cities have a lot of variables. It's going to be impossible to focus on things that I cannot control, so I'm going to focus on what we can control. Bree has picked up Veronica. No reaction. There's no point in having the dogs cross at close range. Even if she's being perfect, you don't you don't know every dog in the world. You don't know how they're going to react. Well, and that was tight quarters. It's a nice plus of having a small dog. When I go to a city with a dog, I'm not letting my dog come into contact with other dogs. There's a time and a place for that, but when we're out on a venture like this, our dog's safety is always the first consideration. One of kind of the silly myths in training dogs is that picking up dogs somehow makes them overly dependent on you. It's a form of coddling them. I've never really bought into that. I don't really get it. Well, it's management, not training, right? Picking right. her up so she doesn't bark isn't the same as teaching her not to bark. It's also not rewarding her for something. But in this case, we're going to fall back on management because Veronica does not yet know the skill of staying right by our side while we pass dogs that she doesn't know at close range in a brand new city that she's never been to. I don't know, being so into dog training, I find myself looking at people who train dogs in public and just trying to see what I can learn from them. Look at these guys. We see that they've got a long lead on their dog. Look at that, look at the rate of reinforcement there. Rewarding duration, this person knows what they're doing right here. Look at that dog in public. By giving the treats over and over like that, a lot of people think, oh, you're treating your dog too much. But really, you're just communicating, hey, staying there is what equals rewards like this. And this person is training like a pro trainer right here. Okay, so he's going for a really nice long duration here. We can look for a release. I bet we can look for it. Let's see if he does it. There you go. And there's the release and there's the reward with the ball. Nice work. Is this a new series idea? Going in public and covertly watching people train their dogs? The world cannot be coming to that. No. But you're going to elect to carry her rather than walk her. Yeah. It's pretty busy here as we cross this crosswalk. If you have a bigger dog though, it's not always so easy to carry them. So we have to make sure that we're doing other things to manage them. Keeping them on a short leash, prioritize heel training, going out during off peak hours. That's why you probably don't put them in this situation for their first city outing and you do some prep work and lay the groundwork. We have to cater our training approach to each individual dog. Lately in the comments of my YouTube videos, I've noticed a lot of people will say something like, well, Zach, there's more than one way to teach a dog, so positive reinforcement isn't the only way. Okay, so much for not pulling, I guess. I think what a lot of people are failing to realize is that there are a thousand ways that you cannot use aversions in your dog training. Being tolerant to pulling like this is pretty important when you're training them and taking them to new places. And this is one of those unplanned variables that just presents itself. Got a barking dog over here. Right there. Now is another barking dog right there. Yeah, can you get her attention on you? Well done. Maybe we can focus on teaching Veronica to look at us or pay attention while the dog is in the distance. There's a couple of things that Bree and I are considering. We don't want to continue to approach a barking dog. That could just escalate both dogs and we don't want to create that precedent. Perfect. 
Essentially, this is being done in the spirit of changing as few variables at a time as possible. So we want to minimize the likelihood of her having a significant stress response, which she will then correlate with being in places like this in the future. You can see how we keep those brain chemicals nice and controlled, approach the situation slowly and methodically that we are not creating more problems for ourselves in the future. Another common way to kind of test your dog and see are they receptive to learning new things is to ask them to sit. Can I get a sit? easy to get her to sit anywhere else. Crowded, busy street, not oh, so easy. Yes. It's almost like you can see her thinking, sit, sit, what's that? I think I know it, I think I know it. You can see how the environment affects her. It can be so valuable when you just let your dog think it out sometimes rather than saying, sit, sit. But dogs have their moments and when they're in new environments, there it is becomes harder. Now she's been warmed up, now she understands. Training sessions like that are 30 seconds to two minutes at a time. A few minutes went by, Bree decided to do a little bit of training with Veronica, but started to become a bit frustrated because Veronica stopped taking treats. She's not taking treats. When you're training with positive reinforcement, you have to have something to reinforce your dog with in order to make sure that you can seal in that behavior. And sometimes that's inconvenient when your dog doesn't want the thing that you think should motivate them. Our objective was only to give her socialization out here anyway. I'm fine to just move on from that. Or maybe I could try. Yes. Well, I said she stopped taking treats and Zach Good. challenged me and I think he's winning. This way. Good. You really have to like capitalize on those moments when your dog is like really, really interested in you, really paying attention. Oh, yes. There we go. Yeah. Here we have things going on like construction. We started seeing a lot of big equipment and experience tells me when you have big, loud things that you want to approach those things cautiously. So this is kind of in our theme of always being aware of your environment so you can understand how that's impacting your dog's mental and emotional well-being at that moment. Being able to positively affect the dog's mental and emotional state when you're training them in a favorable way has unbelievable benefits when you are training a dog. Sounds like that do not go unnoticed by dogs. Just letting her observe the loud sound, you can see the construction equipment over there. Construction sounds are a great opportunity to expose your dog to loud sounds, assuming that that doesn't overwhelm them. The key is to surround the abrasive sounds we're hearing of the construction and the jackhammer with good experiences. So, so in this case, doing some easy sits for treats is getting the job done. Look at that. And there's construction in the background. As Brie continues to train Veronica, you can see her mood is uplifted. She's adapted. She's like, all right, I'm into the treats now. We just gave it a little bit of time. She's jumping up. She's excited. We've got all this stuff going on. And that is where I want my dog mentally. Much better to have a happy jumping dog, even if you don't like the jumping, than it is to have a calm dog who is borderline shut down because they're afraid to make too many erratic movements. Because we can always tame down that jumping easily. I would elect to reward because the focus is on Brianna and that's more important than anything. See, she's doing a lot better on walking here. Giving attention, offering attention a lot more. And here's another unplanned distraction. We have a pigeon. It's a good training opportunity to see if we can call Veronica off that pigeon. No tension on that leash. Just avoiding tension because I really want her to originate this behavior of listening to Bree from the inside outward. I want her to do it because she wants to and understands she needs to. And repeat, that is what dog training looks like. Does this mean that the next time we come out, she's gonna be perfect? No, it doesn't, but it does mean that we've made progress. And we know regular exercise is a big part of our lifestyle with our dogs. I just wanna launch a Frisbee. Go. And there's a lot of extra nuance that goes on during these exercise sessions. Some days it might just be about playing frisbee or it might be about doing sit or stay or come or heal. One of the best times to teach your dog is during or right after vigorous exercise. I'm talking about when they are freshly depleted. By the way, that's a walkie talkie if you're wondering. And even simple things like teaching your dog to heal or staying near you. I'll have her do all of this in order to play with the frisbee for a moment. All right, ready? Lie down. Come around, go. And that's what she does it for. She's like, oh man, I'll do all that for one toss of the Frisbee. But when you get your dog a little winded like this, it becomes much easier to get compliant behavior on things like heel. Come around. Give her a short one. 
These outings where we play frisbee with the dogs and really let them just let loose and play fetch are some of the most productive, unplanned training experiences that we have together. I can hear Bree calling me. She needs help with frisbee training. Guess who's here? It brings me so much joy to know that this training session was caught on film. Oh my goodness! But this is her all-time greatest breakthrough to date. Frisbee dog, she's a fri- <laughs> That was so good, Veronica! And go! Yeah! That is what a happy dog looks like. Tell me if you like videos like this where we actually show you our experiences of training our own dogs who don't yet know the things we're training them. Follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. It is not just business as usual over there lately. We have a lot of big things going on as a dog training community. I mean, we've been having conversations that need to happen in dog training over there. All of you can get a free extra box when you sign up at BarkBox.com slash dog training or SuperChewer.com slash dog training. I'll have a link below. We'll see you guys in the next video.